All right, today we're going to go over barbell rows and a couple of the variations that I like to do. Now, if you're one of those people that basically stands straight up and down and does what I would consider to be a shrug and calls it a bent over row, then if it's working for you, keep it. If not, and if you turn to the side and you just basically disappear because you're so narrow, we got some work to do. Let's get after it. Part of me wanted to make the first qualification you have to actually bend over to do a bent over row because I'm sure you, like me, have seen those eagle lifters at the gym throw 315 on, 405, and just yank it up. But we can actually use that. So I've said this before, but we can take somebody's horrible form and mistakes in life and use it to our advantage. So if you have underdeveloped traps, maybe the upper back, then using that 75 degree angle that most people at the gym use isn't a bad place to start. Just know to get a fully developed back, you're gonna have to work that angle lower and lower to a point where, say you're lacking those lower lats, you have to be almost parallel to the floor to be able to overload that mid back. The biggest mistake I see on these is people not loading their back correctly or enough. And a lot of it has to do with hamstring and flexibility. Because usually what happens is instead of people loading those hips and actually getting the entire back involved to stabilize and control the weight, because of inflexibility, they drop those knees, end up squatting it up, taking that lower and mid back out of it. And at that point, you should just do a cable row. So if this is you, it sucks to hear because it's like being held back a grade, but lighten up the weight. You can graduate when you get to a point where you can actually sit in those hips, load your entire back at a nice low angle. From there, you can start throwing the weight around a little bit, getting those little sloppy with the form, go back to coloring outside the lines and eating paste. So while I'm not opposed to the almost vertical bent over row because there is a place for it, I just tend not to do them as much because it reminds me too much of that gym free page on Instagram where people have horrible form and they're dry humping the floor and shadow boxing with cables. I opt for these two variations instead. The first one on a fairly high incline and I use a weight that I could probably only do about 10 pounds with and I over exaggerate the width of my hands going wider than I normally would to really put emphasis on that upper back. So that second one's on that same angle, maybe even one higher depending on how I feel that day. Now your hands are nice and close, elbows flare out now as you pull you want the contraction of your traps to feel like an impingement. So as you're coming up, you flex so hard into those traps, it actually stops the movement and you go back down. When I was younger, I used to do a ton of bent over reverse grip rows, but I've seen too many people just tear their bicep off and let it roll up into their shoulder. It scared me to death. But one variation I do love is with an easy bar. So there's a couple benefits to this. First one being that if you have an issue like we talked about before in sitting your hips and loading your back on bent over rows, this is gonna work on that because not only is it like a standing hyperextension, but you actually get those lats involved as you do it. The second thing is because we're using the easy bar, most people can do this no problem because when you're using a straight bar on something, even like barbell curls, most people can't supinate their wrist that much. It puts too much pressure on their wrist, their form. They don't even connect to the bicep. So you give them the ability just to pronate just a hair, takes all the pressure off of it. Same thing for this. So you're gonna start this up by setting up like a stiff leg. So legs almost locked out, shift that weight all the way back in your hips. You're gonna go down like a hyperextension. As you go down, let those elbows drift forward, but keep that same angle with your arms the entire time. That'll stretch those lats. And as you arch up and squeeze back, make sure you pull those elbows back, keeping that same angle, flex, and then back down to another one. As always, like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Leave a comment on the video you want me to do next. Get after it, get growing. Talk to you soon.